Hello from National Geographic Education. My name is Gina Borgia and this is Explorer Classroom. This week, many of our viewers who are connected to the United States military are preparing to celebrate Veterans Day on Friday. We hope you have a special time honoring loved ones who have served the United States military branches and we thank military personnel and families for their sacrifice and service. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explorer Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. This school year, each month will be organized around a specific theme. And this November, Explorer Classroom has been exploring the importance of learning from the past, November 4th marked the 100th anniversary of the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings. From the tomb's opening in 1922 to the current day, National Geographic has told the story of King Tutankhamun for a century. And today is extra special because our explorer is joining us from Alexandria, Egypt. Dr. Fred Hebert. Fred is the archeologist in residence at National Geographic Society and a National Geographic explorer who has traveled the world looking for ancient artifacts. This means that Fred uses clues, history, and technology to dig, restore, and study very old items so we can know about how people lived in the past. Today, Fred will tell us about the treasures he has helped uncover from ancient Egypt, his recent travels to Egypt, and what these treasures can teach us about the past lives of others. But before we get into today's lesson, I'd like to welcome our registered viewers who join us from around the globe. Special shout outs for today go to the Ridgefield Memorial High School, Salisbury Central School, Fairmount Elementary School, Gems World Academy, Piermont Village School, William Trotter K-8, through and all of our homeschools out there. We are so thrilled to have you here. And with that, let's get this Explorer Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to Fred to share all about the treasures of ancient Egypt. You can take it away, Fred. And we'll just need to unmute you, Fred. Hold on. There we go. Hi, I'm Fred Hebert. I'm the National Geographic Society archaeologist in residence. I'm here live from Alexandria, Egypt. I'm in Egypt to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the discovery of King Tutankhamun on November 4th, 1922. It's a big global celebration. Everybody, I think, around the world on November 4th tuned in to hear about the discovery that was made 100 years ago. And we're also going to take you to Egypt from here in Cairo down to Luxor, the ancient capital where Tutankhamun lived and where he was buried and where his tomb was discovered. So let's go to the slides and we'll, I'll tell you the story of Tutankhamun and the Valley of the Kings. Great. So behind me, what you just saw there is the same as in this photograph, except for the photograph is during the day, and it's already evening here in Alexandria, Egypt, is the port of ancient Alexandria, which is where Queen Cleopatra lived. Just a few days ago, I came from Luxor, Egypt, flew all the way up here so I could tell you about our celebrations that we had down in Luxor, Egypt, the capital, Tutankhamun's capital. Next slide, please. Could we have the next slide, please? It's up, Fred. It's a map. Yes. Okay. On my screen, it's not up yet. Um, so I would like to tell you a little bit about um, where we are. And um, uh, yes. Uh, and to tell you a little bit about how this is all organized, because I went from North America on the left hand side of the screen to Egypt, which is in Africa. And it took quite a while to go there. Traveling that far took about 15 hours of fly. Next slide, please. Okay, and, and 
as you can see, I flew from Washington, D.C. to Cairo, Egypt. And this is really one of the oldest civilizations in the world. Those of you have, who have taken world history will have learned a little bit about ancient Egypt. It's one of the great civiliza ancient civilizations of the world. There are five of them, as you probably know. And Egypt is definitely one of the most important ones. So let's go on to the next slide. It's a picture of Egypt. It's a map of Egypt. And uh, what we're looking at is a country which is in Northern Africa. It's based on that blue line that's going all the way from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. That's the Nile River. Its waters began in Ethiopia and the Sudan, and it flows all the way north in Egypt, all the way up to the Mediterranean Sea. The capital of modern Egypt is Cairo. And in the past, all of the settlements in ancient Egypt were based along the Nile. Just a few were out in the desert, but mostly you wouldn't want to live out in the desert. So almost all of ancient Egypt is based along the Nile River. Next slide, please. So when we got to Cairo, this is Cairo. You'll see that it's a bustling, big, modern city. It's the modern capital of Egypt. Almost 22 million people live in this one city. It is, of course, based on the Nile. That's the Nile right there. And, uh, and that was where we began. It's got one of the greatest museums in the world, and it's going to get another one very soon. And I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Next slide, please. So as we, oh, before we go down to Luxor, I had a chance to tour some of the great sites just outside of Cairo. We went back to the original capital of ancient Egypt, some 5,000 years old, 4,000 years old around that time. And I saw one of my favorite architectural monuments that I have anywhere, I've seen anywhere around the globe. That's the Sphinx, which is the head of a pharaoh carved with the body of a lion. And this guarded the pyramids that are just behind the Sphinx. It's all carved from the bedrock. It's a single piece of stone. It's pretty amazing. It's almost 5,000 years old. And I can't go to Egypt without seeing the Sphinx and the pyramids. Next slide, please. The thing about ancient Egypt is that archaeology is still uncovering so many secrets. We went near the pyramids to go visit the excavation of a friend of mine who's working to figure out who built the pyramids. Some people say that only 30%, just a fraction of all the archaeological sites have been found in Egypt. That means that 70% of ancient Egypt is still to be discovered. So something to think about. And maybe this type of research can even change the textbooks that you're reading about the ancient world today. Next slide, please. So we flew from Cairo all the way south to the ancient capital of Egypt. That's Luxor, based along the river as well, the same river, the same Nile. Down here in Luxor, there is what's called the Valley of the Kings. And the Valley of the Kings is where all the pharaohs from the New Kingdom, from the last great period of, of pharaohs in Egypt, are buried. Next slide, please. So just two days ago, I was down in Luxor, and we had a chance to take our team actually to visit the tomb of Tutankhamun and the other pharaohs in the Valley of the Kings. It looks like the desert. It doesn't look anything like Cairo or anything like the fertile area of the river of the Nile that I showed you in some of the other pictures. This is out in the desert. They tried to hide the tombs of the pharaohs so that they wouldn't get stolen. It didn't work except for in one case. And that's what makes King Tutankhamun so famous. His tomb was untouched for 3,300 years. 
Before we did that, we visited a, a couple of the other tombs. Next slide, please. And they are all carved out of the bedrock. They went down in big tunnels down into the Valley of the Kings. And here you see the chamber of one of the pharaohs with beautifully carved walls. They carved it right out of the limestone and then painted it. Here in this photograph, you see the pharaoh meeting a god. And it's that god who is going to help the pharaoh go from his mortal life to the afterlife. These gods are what help them get to the afterlife. So next one, next slide, please. To get the Pharaoh to the afterlife, first of all, as you see on the bottom part of this photograph from that tomb, you see that the, the Pharaoh is mummified, wrapped up, all prepared for the afterlife. And above the mummies, there's a, the process of mummification on the bottom are all the attendants it took to prepare the Pharaoh for that big moment where he goes to the afterlife and goes up and, and becomes actually a God in the pantheon of gods of ancient Egypt. Next slide, please. So I really wanted to tell you a little bit about what we learned from the, the discoveries in King Tutankhamun's tomb. That's what really makes it special. It was the only it was the only tomb that was perfectly preserved. And this is one of the artifacts that was found in this tomb. In this tomb, 5,500 artifacts were found. And most things were packed in these beautifully painted boxes. This box, for example, held Tutankhamun's clothing, including not only his robes and his headdress, but 145 pairs of underwear. Pretty, pretty interesting artifact. Next slide, please. It's so far away that I, our internet is a little slow here in Egypt. So, so we also see his throne. This beautifully crafted throne was made for the young Pharaoh Tutankhamun. He was made Pharaoh when he was only nine years old. And he only was a Pharaoh for about 10 years before he mysteriously died. We don't know, we're here to help figure it out. But the throne is so beautiful. Next slide you'll see that it is made out of wood and the whole thing is covered in gold and it's so beautifully crafted. The blue stone and the red stones are inlays that show on the left, Pharaoh Tutankhamun, and on the right, his wife, Ankhonsenamun. It's a very touching scene that tells us a lot about the life in ancient Egypt and helps us better understand what it meant to be like a boy king when you're nine years old. This throne is for when he was just a young man, who just got married. And for me, it's one of my favorite artifacts in the entire tomb. Next slide, please. We still, to this day, don't understand exactly what, oh, it's even another one of these clothing uh, boxes entered in Thomas' tomb is one of my favorite artifacts in the whole tomb. It's another box inside where more clothing and jewelry and things like that. But this, this box carved out of solid gold, uh, carved out of solid wood uh, is made in the name, in the shape of the name of King Tutankhamun. So when you see the front, you see it's actually an oval and those signs in the middle are hieroglyphics that spell out Tutankhamun's name. Look, if you're going to go to eternity, you need to put your name on just about everything. Next slide, please. So we still don't know what, how Tutankhamun died. It's a mystery. We're working on scientifically trying to figure it out. One of the most intriguing theories is that he was out hunting on a, in a chariot in his tomb. There were six chariots that were found of, made of wood and covered in gold, beautiful gold. And here's a 3D uh, photograph of this, a little video that we have taken recently that was presented. And uh, it's possible that Tutankhamun died when he fell off his chariot while he was out hunting. We don't know. Hopefully science will tell us. Even today, a hundred years later, we're still learning mystery about the mysteries 
of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. Next slide, please. Perhaps the most famous and most beautiful of all the artifacts in Tutankhamun's tomb was his burial mass. It covered the mummy, it's made of solid gold, and it's just one of the most beautifully made artifacts in all of ancient Egypt. It's so special. It's so special that today, all of these Tutankhamun artifacts are going to be housed in another museum in Cairo called the Grand Egyptian Museum, where all 5,500 objects from Tutankhamun will be on display and everybody can go and see them in person. Next slide, please. And we're so thrilled that people from around the world are going to have a chance to come visit Egypt and see these treasures for themselves. It's a great place and a great opportunity to visit an ancient civilization, which is just as vibrant today as it was in the past. Next slide, please. Well, as I said, I'm talking to you here in another capital of ancient Egypt, Oops. Uh, uh, Alexandria on the North Coast. There we flew from Luxor all the way to Alexandria. Next slide, please. And I'll answer your questions from exactly this balcony where I was standing, listening to all the car traffic of the weekend. It's the weekend now here in Egypt. And happy to answer any questions that you have about the celebration of King Tutankhamun, what his artifacts mean, what caused his death, or anything about ancient Egypt. I'm more than happy. Wow, thank you so much, Fred, for an incredible look into your work and, I, and for joining us live from Alexandria. Do you have any advice for the young explorers out there? Like how can we get involved in uncovering history like you do? It's so cool to actually get on an airplane and go visit one of these ancient civilizations around the world. I'm lucky that at National Geographic, I have that opportunity. But I always like to tell kids, you don't have to get on an airplane to discover history, to find a mystery. Archeology span and history is everywhere, under your feet, out your front door. You can explore your neighborhood. You can explore a local museum. You can go to your library and read books about these ancient civilizations. And once you get the bug to start reading books at your local library, you're on your path to become the next archeologist. Thank you so much to all the students and teachers for joining us today. We hope that you join many more of our events. But if you are interested in digging more into ancient Egypt, be sure to check out our resource library collection, which we will share in the chat for you. Or as Fred mentioned, you can go hands-on if you are near one of our exhibits and go on a field trip and visit the Beyond King Tut, an immersive experience that will transport your students to the world of the boy king and his quest for immortality. You can find a touring exhibition in a city near you. We'll also drop the link to that in the chat. And finally, you'll want to come back uh, and join us next week as we celebrate Geography Awareness Week. Next Thursday, you can tune in to learn from young explorer Yi Wen Wang, who will teach us about the importance of both art and science in communicating data and inspiring action using tools like Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. You can register for this event and more at natgeoed.org slash explorer classroom, and you can request a chance to be featured on screen with us here while you register. Fellow teachers, we've also created a new interactive guide for you to share with your students to take them on a learning journey with each of our special guests. You can find the Explorer Mindset in Action Guide and the Teacher Edition linked on each event registration page. I hope everyone has a great day. Stay curious and keep exploring. Thank you for joining us on Explorer Classroom. Thank you.